I miss my sister so much. I still love dance, but I feel like it's just different. Like it was Miranda and I together on this journey. And now I'm alone. And number 11, I added this one because I had one more. <laughs> number 11, Melanie, you fill my heart every day. Please don't let that go away. <laughs> Seven F, an entertainment company founded by Robert Shin, who's also the pastor of LA-based Shekinah Church. First it was just, let's get Miranda out of this, and now it's turned into, wow, all of these dancers are involved in this. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Well, there was a lot of confusion about this brand new series that's coming out at the end of the month on Netflix called Dancing for the Devil, the 7M TikTok cult. And as people were rumbling on the internet, confused because they hadn't seen any promotion of it, a couple clips have come out about the series. The full trailer will not be out, I think, until maybe next week or a week after. Right now, there are a few teasers that have been shared on Netflix, on their coming soon on the platform, as well as on social media and on YouTube. So the series actually is the culmination of work of over two years where a group of people, including myself, got together to bring a story to the forefront on a larger platform with the goal of allowing individuals impacted by this group to share their stories of what they've gone through and to, I guess, in a way, seek justice that they want to seek and seek accountability from the individuals that have been involved. So this story went viral back in February of 2022 when Melanie Wilking and her parents Kelly and Dean Wilkin went live on Instagram to share their concerns about Miranda. And the first teaser dives into how the viral storm began. Influencer Miranda Derrick went viral after her family claimed she was part of a dance call called 7M. 7M, entertainment company founded by Robert Shin, who's also the pastor of LA-based Shekinah Church. We're not allowed to contact her. At first it was just, let's get Miranda out of this, and now it's turned into, wow, all of these dancers are involved in this. We just want Miranda back. So as you can see, the series dives into the story of Miranda Wilking and how her parents and her sister basically went viral in February and March of 2022 after they did a live stream and Melanie had announced that her sister and her were no longer working together and gave the reasons behind the scenes about what had been going on. To give you some context, Melanie and Miranda Wilking are dancers, professional dancers. They have been in the dance circuit since they've been children. They were junior dancers uh, as a part of the Detroit Pistons dance team. They were on an episode of Dance Moms. They participated, at least Miranda did, on So You Think You Can Dance. They have been featured in numerous music videos. They have been featured in Miranda's been featured recently in the movie Roadhouse as an extra dancer. TikTok account at the time of this video had around 3 million followers and they were known to make sort of viral TikTok videos of the two of them together. They had always packaged their brand as the two of them together. Miranda is a couple years older than Melanie. They are based out of Michigan. And when Miranda graduated from high school, she moved to Los Angeles. And then when M Melanie graduated from high school, she followed Miranda to Los Angeles and they both embarked on a career in dance. Both of them ended up getting and meeting people within, meeting people within the industry. Miranda ended up meeting a guy named James B. Dash Derrick, who was a contestant on So You Think You Can Dance and a well-known crump dancer. And Melanie actually is about to 
get married to a running back in the NFL named Austin. He played for the Chargers, and now he just signed a contract with the Washington Commanders, and she's actually getting married, I think, later this month. Their TikTok account still has around three million. Melanie took over the account once Miranda left, and Miranda ended up, after quarantine happened, got involved with a group of people through her husband, James, who she wasn't married to at the time. That was a management group, uh, a guy named Robert Chin, who is a pastor, former doctor, an immigrant from Toronto, Canada. And he was promising that he was going to help them with their careers and build this group where he would, you know, give them work, give them advice, as well as participate in this church that he was running. So on one hand, he has the nonprofit side, which is the church. And on the other hand, he has all these businesses and all of these dancers were underneath the same umbrella of 7M. So when it initially went viral, there was a lot of sort of motivation and there was a lot of discussion about like how can we get Miranda free there was viral videos sort of detailing the struggles that the family was having Dean specifically had made trips to California to try to reach out to his daughter this was a family that had always been extremely close and Miranda changed dramatically after she got involved with this group I want to be super clear here. This isn't an instance of Miranda had a toxic family and she's making a boundary cut with her family. It has nothing to do with that. In at least my opinion, this is the influence of a group that is basically in many ways controlling her life and multiple lawsuits filed by former members of the same group of dancers kind of allege the same allegation that their entire lives were controlled. I miss my sister so much. I still love dance, but I feel like it's just different. Like it was Miranda and I together on this journey and now I'm alone. And number 11, I added this one because I had one more. Number 11, Melanie, you fill my heart every day. Please don't let that go away. A large portion of this series is around the story of Miranda, but it's really about so much more. But in a clip that was shared on Netflix in their coming soon portion of their website, a scene from the series shows Melanie Wilking discussing the estrangement that she feels and has with her sister. The two of them were so close and they were like best friends. And then very abruptly, once Miranda joins this group, everything about her changes. She cut her long hair that she prided herself on and absolutely loved. She never had any interest in cutting her hair prior to the group involvement, according to the family members and the people that knew Miranda. And then suddenly she became like this blonde bombshell with like a short blonde bob. And she started cutting off contact with her family members. She was not communicating with them frequently. They began to get blocked on all of their social media. They would try to reach out to her. She wouldn't respond. Sometimes she would respond and then they didn't know if it was actually her. They got blocked by Miranda's account so they couldn't even leave comments. If they did did leave comments, they would get deleted and then blocked. And it was her birthday in 2022 that they finally shared what was going on. It's really sad because we're blocked on absolutely everything. I literally feel like my sister died. She's everywhere, but nowhere. Haunting me. She cut off all ties. I don't know anybody that has spoken to her from before. After quarantine, Melanie and Miranda returned to Los Angeles and Miranda and James got involved with this guy named Isaiah Shin, who is Robert Shin's son. And Isaiah began making videos for James. And through Isaiah, that is how they met Robert. And then that's kind of how this idea of 7M, I guess, was pitched. There are court records that sort of have discussions about how it was decided. 
Robert's decision, Robert's side of the story is that he met these talented dancers and he wanted to use his expertise as being a successful business part, business entrepreneur, as well as being a spiritual leader as a pastor to help them cultivate their careers and launch them into further success. He really looks at himself as sort of this benevolent individual that's all about helping other people. And on the flip side, the ex-dancers will say that they were sort of propositioned by this group that they would help them from anything from management to taxes to, you know, helping them book auditions, taking care of really everything. So they're going into a world of Los Angeles where all they want to do is work. And this management group is like, we will do everything for you, allegedly. Like, we're going to take care of all your auditions. We'll help you find housing. We'll take care of your social media. Well, heck, we'll help you film your social media. We will post your content for you, that kind of stuff. And so for the dancers who have very um, unstable employment, I don't know if you know a lot about dance, but it's kind of up and down. And a lot of them can be very vulnerable to groups like this because they really are looking for stability and help in the industry. And Robert sort of came in and sort of filled that niche for them. So while all this is going on, there, she's estranged from the family, but she's like blowing up on social media and all of her videos are becoming viral and they're getting millions and millions of views and they're, they're seen everywhere. They're on Mario Lopez. They're on Ellen DeGeneres. Their videos are using older music and staying alive was one of their favorites. And this is an abrupt change. She goes from daily contact, constant contact, best friends forever, loving her parents to like nothing. So the final part of the clip is kind of Dean discussing his challenge of trying to reach Miranda. And then what I'm going to do after that is I want to read to you part of the lawsuit filed by Kylie Douglas to give you an understanding of what she was going through during the time that all this was happening. The only people that I think speak to her are whoever is involved in this religious organization. If anyone has ideas or something that yeah. they know of, someone may have, maybe someone came out of a religious organization that they know of recently yeah. that could help us because I will not give up on my family. It's 2024. If you go to Miranda Wilkins, Miranda Derrick's t TikTok, which has 2 million followers, you will see that she has videos and photos and, and dancing with her family. And she does see her family, although not as frequently as they used to before. And if you notice, she shares videos of her family, but frequently Melanie, her sister, does not. When Melanie had a bachelorette we weekend recently, Miranda did not attend the event in Las Vegas. I don't know if she wasn't invited, but she wasn't there. And Melanie doesn't post a lot with her sister. Miranda does, which is what a lot of people suspect as a way to sort of save face and show people like, hey, I still speak to my family. And former members have said that that was allegedly a part of the strat strategy. It was like sort of propaganda, make it look like everything's normal, try to discount and paint a narrative that everything is fine. And she has still been posting normal content as of this video. So back in May of 2023, a cross complaint was filed against Robert Shin by former members of the dance crew that were were members along with Miranda and the 7M Films Management Group. To be clear, none of their bios anymore say 7M on them. They all say that they're run independently by themselves, though as far as I can understand, she is still under this group and is still a member of this group, even though her management doesn't say that they're who's managing her. So Kylie Doug Douglas is actually suing Robert Chin for a variety of reasons, and Kylie's part of the lawsuit is pretty heartbreaking. It says, when Kylie began working with 7M, she was not given an employment contract. Hannah told Kylie that 7M, and Hannah is Robert's wife, would represent her, promote her social media pages, and get her brand deals. Kylie put 7M's contact information on her social media profiles. Hannah and Robert would take 20% of all of Kylie's 7M deals as a management fee as part of the deal for them representing her. Even when Kylie got a deal on her own, she would have to pay a management fee to, in order to die to herself and not be selfish, even though 7N had nothing to do with her getting the deal. Kylie also had to pay separate fees for videography. There are other examples of cross defendants requiring donations from Kylie and other cross complainants as proof that they had to die to themselves and were loyal to Robert and Shekinah. 
Here's a few examples. Robert had some cross defendants making an offering to Chez, another dancer, at a Bible study. They sent cross defendant Isaiah a Venmo for these funds. Robert then gave Chez the cash. Another time on prophecy night, Shekinah members had to come up with a number to give to the religious prophets. At one point, Kylie offered the entire $3,500 she had in her bank account because she really wanted to give her all to God. Hannah approved this donation. However, when Robert announced on the pulpit how much he was giving profits, it never added up to what Kylie and other cross complainants were giving. On information and belief, Robert pocketed the difference and the numbers never added up. Cross complainant Aubrey gave Kylie two pairs of Louis Vuitton shoes for her birthday and Christmas. And as soon as Kylie told Hannah, Hannah convinced her that Kylie was not ready to receive a gift like that. Hannah told Kylie to give the shoes to her at the next service. A little while later, Hannah took Kylie and a few other members to lunch. She told them all about how Kylie did not deserve the gift and took everyone into the mall and returned the shoes in front of Kylie and then told Kylie and another member to pick out bags using the money from the returned shoes gifted by Aubrey. Additionally, as other cross complainants, Kylie was told that in order to do everything she could for God, she needed to fully submit to Shekinah. In practice, this meant reporting everything she did to Hannah, who would then relay the information to Robert. Hannah was constantly telling Kylie that she needed to give more to Shekinah and that she needed to empty her schedule for Shekinah if she wanted to get invited to things and be included in dance jobs and events. When Kylie joined Shekinah, she already had her own phone, phone line, tax preparer, car lease, apartments, various jobs, and a company that she ran. Hannah endeavored to bring all of those under Shekinah's control. Hannah told Kylie many times to join Aubrey's phone line, which was connected to Shirley's, another leader of the group. And Hannah yelled at Kylie when she told Hannah that Kylie's family friend does her taxes. Hannah told Kylie to tell her mom that she would be getting her taxes done on her own and told Kylie to pay Chrissy $200 for them. Chrissy is another member of the church and a CPA. But Kylie was already getting her taxes done for free, so she told Hannah no. Hannah also yelled at Kylie over this. It goes on to say, Robert and Hannah wanted Aubrey and Kylie to move into a home with other members, and at first, Aubrey and Kylie declined. Kylie told them it was further from her job. She had just gotten a new lease, so miles would go up on her car. As a result, she and Aubrey got yelled at by Robert in the middle of a service, and he used Aubrey and Kylie as an example of members who were not properly submitted to Shekinah and God. At that point, Aubrey and Kylie felt they had no choice but to move in with other members, which included, which resulted in Kylie paying more for rent, driving further for all of her jobs, and racking up her lease miles. Kylie paid rent to Chrissy through Zell, the, the CPA and the member of the church. Hannah continued to pressure Kylie to clear her schedule for Shekinah. Kylie felt so drained by being excluded that she quit her job, quit a job for a performing arts after school program that she loved working. Hannah told Kylie to cut that job because it was paying the least of all of Kylie's jobs. Hannah told Kylie Hannah could easily make her $2,000 a month from social media jobs and not to worry about the money. Months later, Kylie was still not included in Shekinah activities or making money, Hannah promised. Hannah insinuated that Kylie would be should be in better shape and had Kylie switch gyms to be around Shekinah family more. Kylie, Kylie had been paying $19 a month at her old gym, but Hannah made her sign up for a gym and the pay for two year commitment at $800. Kylie was frequently told to get in shape and was asked questions so that she used to weigh and she was asked questions on what she used to weigh herself. Kylie was sent by Chrissy and Hannah to go grocery shopping for their house and was not allowed to buy things that were not on sale, if not a necessity. Even though groceries were, sup were supposed to be included in their rent, Kylie would still pay out of pocket at Costco or Food for Less. Living in a house with Shekinah members exhausted Kylie. Everything she did was reported to Chrissy or to Hannah, her mentor. If Kylie left a dish in the sink and didn't wake up on time for morning prayer or came home late and did not make dinner, Hannah would yell at her and use these things as excuses to not include her in Shekinah activities. The Shekinah women's meetings on Fridays were equally disturbing. Kylie would buy the food and dinner for many women's meetings and bring the mentors Starbucks. Kylie would even buy food and 
for the praise and worship teams on Sunday service days. Kylie was brainwashed into thinking she needed to buy everything she could for them and they would know she was dying to herself and not being selfish. Hannah frequently called Kylie out for doing something wrong. Kylie would fight back in tears at the meetings and cry herself to sleep. Hannah would frequently tell Kylie, even in front of the other Shekinah members, that Kylie was sucking on her mama's titties due to visiting her family and, or wanting to celebrate holidays with her family. At least one occasion after Kylie Annette had asked Sa Hannah about seeing her family, Hannah intentionally brought Kylie, Alex, Jenny, Chrissy into the women's room at Shekinah, where Hannah then berated Kylie for two hours. This included saying that Kylie was sucking on her mama's titties. Kylie found her time in Shekinah to be mentally draining. She never was good enough, was left out of Shekinah activities, and was separated from her own boyfriend, Aubrey, all of the time. It was hard to grow her relationship when mentors controlled everything. Kylie was not allowed to ask other members to do videos. She had to wait until they asked her. Kylie was instructed to wait to post videos until dancers with more followers had posted to get all the attractions to their page. On information and belief, Seven Hem withheld jobs from Kylie in favor of other dancers. This stunted her growth. Hannah and Shekinah worked to isolate Kylie from everyone in her life. Hannah told Kylie that she needed to devote all of her time to Shekinah, but intentionally excluded Kylie from many activities because she said Kylie was not devoted enough. This frequently kept Kylie apart from her boyfriend, Aubrey. Hannah told Kylie to spend as much time at home as possible so, so Kylie could observe Chrissy and pick up good habits. Hannah would berate Kylie and embarrass her in front of others for wanting to spend time with her family. Hannah would also tell Kylie that she would not be included in church events if she left to visit her family. Hannah would tell Kylie that she should not see her family when they asked to see her. She should only see her family on her terms. When Kylie told Hannah that she wanted to hang out with Kalia, Hannah told Kylie that new Shekinah members were not allowed to hang out together to keep them, to keep bad ideas from forming. The last straw was when one day at the gym, Robert said he would crack Kylie's back, but then started hip thrusting into her from behind. She filed a police report against him, which is attached. After Robert hip thrust into her from behind, she felt distraught, confused, drained and uncomfortable. Kylie was afraid that speaking up about her experiences with Robert would neg negatively affect her status in Shekinah. She did not know who she could trust and felt like she could not tell anyone. She left Shekinah in July 22 and stopped working with 7M. Another aspect of this lawsuit is that Kylie's boyfriend, Aubrey, they are no longer together, but at the time, he was basically asked by Robert and other leaders to sign a NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, because apparently they didn't want anyone in the church after news broke about what was going on. They didn't want any of the dancers to speak. And so in order to be a part, not only of the management team, but apparently of Shekinah, they had to sign a NDA. And so he is seeking declaratory judgment of unenforceability, which says that Cross complainted Aubrey realleges and incorporates by reference the allegations contained in the proceedings that as a result of the facts described in the preceding paragraph, there exists, there exists a controversy of sufficient immediacy and reality to warrant the issuance of a, a declaratory judgment that the NDA signed by Aubrey with cross defendant Shekinah is unenforceable and not legally binding. On information and belief, cross defendants take the position that the NDA NDA is enforceable. Cross complainant Aubrey alleges the NDA is a generic internet form, overbroad and unenforceable as to the scope, lacking consideration too vague as to time and too vague as to consequences and is thus unenforceable. Cross complainant is entitled a declaratory judgment that the NDA is unenforceable and not legally binding. So when news hits about this, apparently people that want to stay at the church are having to sign non-disclosure agreements. A church asking members to sign NDAs, not all of them signed them. Some of them left when this was introduced to them, but Aubrey signed it. And so he's seeking to get out of that NDA. It's kind of weird if a church asks you to sign an NDA, right? That's my opinion. So really what you're hearing in this lawsuit, at least from Kylie's perspective, now Robert Shin and his group deny everything. 
is that every aspect of their lives were controlled from her perspective, from where she went to live, the jobs that she was able to take, who she was able to spend time with. At home, she had someone monitoring everything that she did. So her men- she had an older woman, a woman that was older than her, that had been in the church longer, that monitored her according to what her statements are, everything that she did, and then reported it to Hannah, who then reported it to Robert. So they have a reporting system, and then indiscretions that they're not doing things at home ends up with punishment. It also sounds like if they see their family and they miss activities, they're punished. And because this group is built on commitment and jobs, anytime someone is reported for something, it sounds like opportunities are taken away from them, which impedes their financial security. And then they're paying rent to people from the church. They're signing leases of properties that are being leased out by not necessarily Shekinah, but their realtors are part of the lease agents. So a couple of people in Shekinah are real estate agents and brokers. And so they're the managers for these rentals and they're likely receiving a commission. So they're basically making money from the way that Kylie describes it on taxes. And then the tax documents, according to the lawsuit, are never accurately filed. And they're missing information about donations made. They're also not allowed to see friends. They're told not to see family. They are told to die to themselves. They're punished if they don't die to themselves. It sounds like she was verbally abused. She wasn't able to do and see who she wanted to see. What she ate was controlled. Getting in shape was controlled. It's very high control here. And so when you talk about Miranda, just think of it in the context of what Miranda could be going through. It's likely it's very similar. Every aspect of their lives are being controlled, allegedly. They, of course, deny all of these things, but you have literally six people or seven people in this cross-complaint making the same claims about the control that they were under with this group. And many of them saying that they were giving almost all of their money to the church and almost getting nothing back. It's sad. And so this isn't just about a woman cutting off her family and setting a boundary. It's control. It sounds like it's a cult, allegedly. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this. I'd love to know if you're interested and looking forward to the docuseries and what your thoughts are about groups like this. Have you ever been in Los Angeles and seen anything like this before? Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button before you go out the door and click on the bell so you never miss a video. Bye, guys.